What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about Diablo Immortal. So if you've watched the channel pretty regularly, you might know that I play ARPGs in my spare time. They are the games that I play to relax in between reviewing video games, etc. And if you've watched the channel a ton, you'll know that Diablo means a lot to me. So naturally, when Diablo Immortal was announced, like a lot of people, I went, wow, a mobile Diablo game sounds terrible. With its very recent release. I think it technically released yesterday, but they shadow dropped it on the first as well, I believe. But I decided to check it out. And there are a few things I want to talk about, primarily where it fits into the Diablo story, if you will, the gameplay, what I think of it, and then last but not least, of course, the monetization. However, I will start right there. Frankly, this game is a pay-to-win mess in terms of its monetization. They have doubled down on a lot of predatory monetization mechanics that are very par for the course in terms of what mobile games are, because while you can play Diablo Immortal on PC, understand first and foremost this is a game designed for mobile and it shows. Before we dive into all of that stuff, let's talk about the story of Diablo Immortal. It takes place five years after Diablo 2, which means it takes place 15 years before Diablo 3, and the story revolves around shards of the world stone being used for nefarious purposes by the typical cults, etc. that you would expect in the Diablo franchise. So pretty par for the course there. However, I would say it's a bit thin for something that claims to want to be a legitimate Diablo experience, if you will, to the point where I understand that ARPGs like Diablo, etc. are usually a little light on the story, but this one in particular, there's just not a lot going on there. Not to say the overall main plot isn't interesting enough, it's just that there's not a lot there. Now, in terms of gameplay, you're basically looking at Diablo 3 with some mechanical changes. Sure, there are some new enemy types, some new animations, that type of stuff, but by and large, this is just Diablo 3 on the mobile platform, same classes, etc. But they did make some minor changes that I enjoy generally speaking, but I don't think really make it interesting enough for an entirely new title, such as the ability to actually customize your character in game. You can like customize their face and stuff, which seems especially pointless in an isometric game. Not that I dislike it, but the like the level of detail that they allow you to give these characters is something you're never going to see in game. So it's interesting that they went that far with it. And then beyond that, the game takes place in essentially small zones throughout the entire world of Sanctuary, if you will. So your waypoints will usually take you across those zones and then two different zones, but they're all kind of just tiny little instances. After you play through the tutorial, you can see other players. There is a sort of town hub, and then when you're in any individual zone, you can see other players running around. And then there are actual instanced dungeons that you can run into, and then there are the rifts. The rifts are exactly like the rifts from Diablo 3. They function essentially the same way. So gameplay-wise, the game isn't terrible. The actual gameplay is solid enough. I don't think it's really mechanically much different from Diablo 3, but hey, this is available on mobile, so there's something for you, I guess. And then we get to the monetization, and it's really bad. So let's talk about some of the predatory practices that I personally noticed. So for starters, they have an icebreaker, which is basically a comparatively good deal to the rest of what they have going on that attempts to get you in the door, so to speak, in terms of spending money on the title. This is a very, very common practice, especially among mobile games, but elsewhere as well. Basically anything free to play will likely have what is called an icebreaker. The entire purpose of an icebreaker is that it is a one-time purchase that is a better than average deal you would normally get that gets you comfortable with paying for it. Literally called an icebreaker. It is a psychological trick that these games do. And then from there, there are multiple currencies across multiple different facets of the game. This is intentionally complicated. There are crafting materials, there are legendary crests, there are eternal orbs, there are runes, there are currencies like gold and platinum. And again, this is designed intentionally to be annoying, to where you're like, well, I don't know where even to start with all this, so I'll just pay for it and skip it. Again, very common mobile game practice. And then let's start with all the incentives like battle pass, etc. to get you in the door every day. 
and then push you towards cosmetics, etc. Now, if cosmetics were the end of this annoying monetization, I don't think it would be so bad, but the game is, quite frankly, pretty pay to win. Now, you can just outright buy several of these currencies, and the ones you can't buy, you can use the currencies you bought to go get. And naturally, you can use a lot of what is available for purchase outside of cosmetics to do things like reforge your gear, guarantee legendary gem drops, which are a big part of the in-game gear progression, meaning that you can very much so just pay to get yourself a bunch of better drops, better gear, and just make yourself better at a multiplayer title, because the game can be played with friends. As I said, there are people out and about, you'll see them. There is a sort of hub town that you'll see people in as well, so this is a multiplayer title with pay-to-win mechanics. There's even leaderboards in-game. Now, you might be looking at all of that monetization and be thinking, well, this is a free game, so it's fine. And if it wasn't monetized as heavily, I might actually agree with you. Like, if the monetization, in my opinion, stopped at just the cosmetic stuff, I really wouldn't care that much. But all the extra stuff, the icebreaker, the confusing currencies that are designed to be annoying, the pay to win stuff, it's all just there to make as much money as possible. Because point blank, if they wanted this to be a legitimate Diablo experience, why would you not just charge 10 to $15 for this mobile game? Now, they would love to tell you that, oh, that's because it's the industry standard to monetize it in a free-to-play model. To which I would argue the industry standard is garbage because it's just a pay-to-win nightmare. And let's be honest, you're using the fact that the game is free-to-play to implement all these mechanics that are ultimately going to get you a lot more money because they prey on psychological factors of an individual, which is, again, going to net you a lot more revenue than simply charging someone one time for a purchase. This is clearly a financial decision because you know you can make more money because for companies like this there's just never enough money and as someone who loves Diablo I think this is honestly just sad to see because as you heard me talk about there's nothing wrong with the gameplay of this I think it's a solid enough game I just think the monetization is garbage which makes it not worth playing. Personally, I would rather, again, just pay a one-time fee and then just be able to play the game without all this extra nonsense that you're putting in the way just to try to get somebody to pay you more. And quite frankly, I think it cheapens the franchise. I think it damages your brand. And moreover, I don't think Blizzard's actually going to care because at the end of the day, this game will likely rake in cash hand over fist because that's what mobile games do. And they do it in the scummiest way possible. But there you guys go. My thoughts on Diablo Immortal, since I knew people would likely ask here and there, and they actually already have been. But broadly speaking, to sum it up, a decent game would have been fun to play it on a mobile device when I was out and about or something. But the monetization of it is just not good. There you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, even if it was a bit of a bummer, honestly. Regardless, if you did enjoy it, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. I do not typically cover ARPGs. Again, they are normally just a game I play to relax and chill out a bit. But this is just one that I wanted to talk about in this context. And hopefully, Diablo 4 is none of this, quite frankly. So, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.